Hey friend, are you wondering if it's time to write your book? If so, I want you to watch this video. I'm Kelly Notaris. I'm the founder of KN Literary Arts, and we are a full service book studio, walking you from wherever you are to having a book in your hand. So visit us at knliterary.com. And also I bring all of my 20 plus years of book publishing experience right to this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe and click that little bell icon so you never miss a video. I'm so excited to be sharing with you a conversation that I had with my good friend, Dr. Elisa Hellerman. She and I went on a long journey to get her to the point where she knew what the book was she wanted to write. She was able to get a book proposal out there, sold it, and now her book is coming out. It's called Soulbriety. It will be out in December of 2022, a few weeks from when this is being recorded. And I'm super excited about it. It's an amazing book I've absolutely loved working on, but it was also a real journey that will help you assess for yourself are you ready to write your book? Do you know what you want it to be about? Do you understand what you need to say? Do you know what genre you want the book to be? We're gonna cover all of those points in the conversation that follows. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about Elisa. So Dr. Elisa Hallerman is the founder of the Recovery Management Agency. She is an attorney and member of the New York State Bar Association. She's a former Hollywood talent agent, starting out at ICM and later becoming partner at UTA and William Morris Endeavor. She holds a master's and doctorate from Pacifica Graduate Institute in depth psychology and somatic studies, focusing on neuroscience and trauma. She's also a drug and alcohol counselor, a member of the Institute for Functional Medicine, and a visiting professor for film and media arts at Chapman University. So as you can see, she has a very diverse and interesting background and I know you're going to enjoy the conversation. So let's jump right in. Hi, Elisa, I'm so happy to be here with you. I am so happy to be here with you and that we are finally at this stage exactly. of our book. That is right. Exactly. Speaking of which, can you hold up the book so that everybody can see the beautiful cover? Yes. There it is. Soul Briety, A Plan to Heal Your Trauma, Overcome Addiction, and Reconnect with Your Soul by Dr. Elisa Hallerman. Oh, I love that spine. Looks so cool. I know. I know. Oh, this looks so cool. So great. And, um, so we are recording this just a couple weeks before the book is officially published. And first of all, how are you feeling at this place after so long of trying to get the book into the world? Uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for people to read it and for it to be out there. I'm just trying to stay in the moment and really enjoy everything. Of course, there's anxiety and fear and the inner critic that come up every now and again, but I'm really proud of it. And if it just helps one person, like my prayer is just that it will help people. So awesome. Good. Well, I know that it will help people. And also, you know, at the beginning, I actually gave a little intro to you and I went through the entire list of all the cool things that you've done in your life. And, you know, as an introduction to the concept of writing a book from your soul, which by the mm -hmm. way, is often on its own timetable, okay. um, I was hoping that maybe you could tell us just a little bit about your story. Like how did you end up here today writing this book? So I got sober 20 years ago in 2002. At the time, I was working in the entertainment industry and I was a baby agent. And I had stuff, I'd been addicted to alcohol and I'd been addicted to drugs and I had suffered from trauma. And after I got sober from drugs and alcohol, Essentially, I was still suffering from later what I would talk about as just a crisis of meaning and purpose in my life that really I put down the drugs and the alcohol, but I picked up other things like workaholism and other isms and basically was still anesthetizing with things that were had a really short shelf life of being effective and it wasn't until five years into my sobriety that I really had this wake up call. And like I talk about in the book, this whisper from soul that said, do you love this job? Do you want to live here? Do you want to be in this relationship? These really big questions that soul will ask of you. And like everybody else, I was like, shh, shh, shh not now not now. I'm just walking around in my ordinary life doing my thing. And these are too big. 
And eventually, if we do not listen to soul, and these whispers will become louder and louder and louder until a brick house falls on your head and you're forced to stay. And that's what happened. And then basically I retired from the entertainment business and started my own company, recovery management agency, and went back to school. And it was when I was doing my dissertation research that I decided, and I studied depth psychology, D-E-P-T-H, and depth (laughs) psychology just to be clear. Um, I studied depth psychology. Okay. I say depth psychology and depth psychology is oriented around the unconscious. And it's a tradition that oversees Jungian psychology and archetypal psychology and really looks at our, our soul and our unconscious. And so the question that I asked in my dissertation was, can doing soul-centered work help with long-term recovery from addiction? And the answer was a resounding yes from the participants. But the caveat was they didn't know they were doing it. They didn't know how they were doing it and they didn't recognize when soul was showing up. And And I realized at that point that we needed to have language around soul work and that it was important so that people could do it on their own and they could go into the soul work when they wanted to and they could sit comfortably in these dark nights of the soul and be able to alchemize their pain into purpose and that's when i decided to write the book mm-hmm. well it's so interesting because that there was a time when you came to me originally where well first of all i just want to say you and I met at an event and you were like, you're going to be my editor. And I was like to myself, like, no, I'm not. I (laughs) don't take on projects at this point. Like I've got too much else I'm I'm doing. And you were like, knock, 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 knock. You're going to be my editor. And I remember I was in a cab and I just thought, oh no, I'm supposed to do this book. I'm supposed to work with her. Like, no, I promised myself I was taking on no more projects. I was already overwhelmed and underwater, but I just knew I had to. And I really think that was like a call of my soul. I don't you know, know why I learned a lot working with you and love you. And you and I became really good friends. So there's that, that, you know, maybe was destined to happen, but definitely felt like a soul calling to work with you. Um, but at that time, what you wanted to do was turn your dissertation into a book. Correct. Which should sound like an easy thing to do. It's already written, right? Correct. <laughs> uh, so what happened from there? <laughs> that didn't work at all. Um, what happened was I heard you speak. I knew that I didn't know how to write a book. I came from a world of movie scripts that I'd read, you know, tens of thousands of, but writing a book was completely foreign to me. What happened was, is I sent you the the dissertation and I asked for some help in putting together an outline slash proposal of what the book would look like based on the um, based on the dissertation. And when I got it back, a rough draft of what that would look like, I in- instantly knew that wasn't the book. I just you looked just at it. Clear. I want to say that like what we did, you and I together, was we put together an outline, which then I handed off to one of our ghostwriters, one of our literally tip, 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 top of the pyramid ghostwriters. Oh, she's amazing. Center, who's amazing. Yeah. But when you got it back, you were like, I don't like this. Yeah. And I'll say what was happening on my side at that time was like, oh dear, I've seen this before. Mm-hmm. We are not ready to write this book yet. Mm-hmm. And- that's what I want to talk about. Like really, because I do think that books are born on a schedule and it is not necessarily the schedule that we have in our own head. Mm -hmm. It actually could be called the soul schedule, whether it's your soul or the soul of the book. I mean, it's kind of both, right? It it has to go through its gestation process. Mm -hmm. And we don't, excuse me, we don't always get to decide how long that is. So I knew at that moment, Okay. Like basically I threw up the book proposal, you know, threw the pages in the air and was like, okay, you and I are going to have to work on a different level. We have to go back to the discovery level of what it is that you actually want to write. Yes. And I think it's so important also that there's no shortcuts. I was feeling very overwhelmed and busy 
and had an idea. I think that most people, I want to write a book. This is important material. I want to write a book. I'm going to get some help. And it's just going to, it's just somehow going to unfold. And the process is so much more personal than that. And there wasn't anyone that could put my soul and my beliefs onto paper, but me. Mm -hmm. And it was going to take time. And it was going to take a lot of writing before I could see what it is that I even wanted to tell. And also which stories I was going to, to tell and what stories I was still working on. And I think you said to me, like, share share from your scars, not from your wounds. Mm -hmm. And through the process, there were a lot of scars that I was able to discuss and there were still wounds that I was dealing with. And over that period of time, and, you know, and I say this in, in, in when I thank you in the book that you were not just my editor and my English teacher, but became this really amazing friend from such a soul level because we went through a process that was so enormously intimate and you were able to sit with me and pull things out of me and also tell me that I was sharing too much or this wasn't right or this was coming from a place of shame or guilt and not from a teaching place and I think the process is just it was an incredible learning experience writing the book is in itself a full-time job Totally. A hundred percent. And, you know, I, I love when you said you can't take shortcuts because I do think a lot of times people who want to write a book, if, you know, sometimes it's easy to just hand over your ideas to a ghostwriter and they can do it. And usually it's because you already have the whole thing fully cooked. So for example, you and I were talking about this earlier, you've taught that material in that order to real people in classes, in workshops, one-on-one -on -one with, with coaching clients, whatever it might be for a long time, then it's actually very easy to say, okay, here are some recordings of the modules that I teach all the time. Each one becomes a chapter, go, to, go do your thing. And a ghostwriter totally can do that. But when the soul of the book has not yet been born mm -hmm. <laughs> and you haven't already taught this material in this order, it can take a lot longer and a ghostwriter can't actually access your soul for you. You no. have to be the one to do that. So if you had been ready to write a sort of straightforward how to guide, I think you could have worked with a ghostwriter, but that's not even what sobriety ended up being. So tell us a little bit about what did sobriety end up being? The book ended up being more of a memoir in the sense that I recognized through the process that soul speaks does not necessarily speak in anything other than story and metaphor and imagery. And so in order to tell the story of soul sobriety, it had to be told in story. And there wasn't a, this is how you do it. This is how you work with soul kind of step-by-step -step process that there are a lot of books out there that do that really, really well, but this specific modality and lifestyle, if you will, of living a soul-centered life cannot be taught in that way, that it became clear that through my own story and the story of clients that people would see themselves in different ways as and notice their own their own soul suffering or their own way for caring for the soul, whatever was was touching them at that moment. And that is how the book teaches it is through storytelling. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I remember some of the way we worked would be that I would say to you, what story do you want to tell about this? You know, you would say, oh, I need to talk about um, the, the inmost cave, like the cave that you right. created for yourself. And I'm like, okay, great. Go this week and write that story. And you would go write the story and you would send it to me and I would look at it. And then we would talk. We had a real coaching, a book coaching yes. relationship for 
like a year. I mean, it yes. was a long time. Um, to, and the first thing we did was get your book proposal out there. And then after the book proposal was out, then we did the whole same thing again with the book. Yes. So it's it was a long journey that we were on together. And so I say that because I know a lot of people who watch this you know, YouTube channel are interested in getting their book into the world and they don't know what kind of support is available. And so I love our story because it just shows how it's not always a straight line. It's not always like, I love telling people write and ask outline. But what I discover is that if you can't write the outline, it's usually because the book concept has not yet been cooked. And if the book concept has been cooked, it's very easy to write an outline. So if you who are watching this are having an issue writing your outline, maybe you're on a journey that's more like Elisa's where you need to be writing and discovering as you write. But I'm going to ask you, how, how did you get to the writing desk when you, you have such a huge life, RMA is a uh, literally more than 24 hour a day job. And, you know, you also have a lot of other things in your life in terms of family obligations and things like that. How did you actually take, get the time? How did you carve it out to be able to sit down and do that exploratory writing? I really had to be diligent about carving out that time for me, the morning, was the best time to write because the day hadn't started. I didn't have that energy of having to solve problems or dealing with crises that need my 150% attention only on that. And so I would write, I would get up at 5.30 in the morning and I would use that time in the quiet to just get my thoughts out. And then the weekends became, certainly when I was in the writing, writing process, became the time also where I would just carve out hours. And I really did not engage in a lot. It was, it, it was easier because we had a pandemic. And so I was able to sort of say, well, it's a pandemic, I can't go anywhere. But I definitely missed a lot of things on the weekends and um, it was just, it, it was just my time. There was no in the middle of the day sitting down or even at the end of the work day feeling into it, unless I was really called or had something that I wanted to share, then I would write it down. But I also jumped around a lot in, if I thought of something that I wanted to share or a story came to me, I would write that down. I mean, we have, or I have a hundred pages of writing that are, that's not even in the book. Mm -hmm. Literally. I think it's 95 pages. <laughs> and I was going back and looking at it to see if there was anything I wanted to pull. And there's some like amazing stories in there, but they just didn't fit eventually in, you know, the contract that we had put together. Definitely. And now you can use that writing in other ways. So it's not, it's not lost writing. And it also is oftentimes really something we have to go through in order to get that polished gem that goes in a book, which is yep. very, I think a soul process, right? Where you have to move through a lot of things that are not necessarily what you wanted in order to get to the thing that you want. Yeah. And I think what's really important just from the writer's perspective is I knew it wasn't that I just wanted to write a book. I felt called to write the book. And I think that's a different place to come from it. I think a lot of people will want to do things. And it's kind of what I tell my clients when they say, I think I should do this, or I think I should do this. And I'm like, can you put your hand over here and tell me if you feel intuitively that this is what you should do? Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking it, it's not always the correct decision, or it might be coming from a place of ego or fear that you think you need to do something. And so because I felt called, it was easier to make the time. It was... Also, you know, I used to, in the beginning, I would tell you, you, you felt like the scary English teacher where I would get stuff back and it would just be read, edit, <laughs> edits, edits, or very like, this isn't what I said, or da, 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 or, you know, just very to the point, which is exactly what I needed. 
But there were a lot of times where I would engage in a discussion with you of like, okay, but let me tell you how I feel. Mm -hmm. And you would just let me talk and talk for an hour. And you would take notes on the things that I was saying and come back to me with, this is what I heard you say. And that gave me a lot of clarity. I'm a better talker than I was at the time writer. Mm -hmm. And it was easier for me. So I think the important thing is to do what you do best. Find someone that's going to collaborate with you in that process and that you're going to have that connection with who scares you, but someone that you trust (laughs) and knows more than you in a lot of ways. I had no idea how to write a book or anything close to it. And so it was, you know, it it ended up being such a, one of the greatest experiences of my life, really. It was so fun. We had such a good time. It was really, really fun. And I think that that's why I kept going. You know, there was a point where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to take this on myself. And I was like, but I actually really enjoy talking to you and I enjoy what you have to say. And I feel like it deserves to be in the world. And that was truly the motivation for me that kept me going. So to close here, I just want to ask you, if you had a piece of advice for someone who's asking themselves, is it time for me to write a book? Is this the right time? Should I write the book? What would you say to them? How would you help them to find their sole answer to that question? Great question. I I would start writing and really ask yourself, what is it that I want to say? What is it that I want to say? And what is it that people that that is going to suit the readers a lot of what i wanted to write and what i felt i backing up i think the answer is in the what am i giving not a perspective of what do i want to say but what am i giving to my readers and A lot of times when I was vacillating between, am I telling this story or not? It was, is this going to serve the readers or someone out there? Or is this something that I just want to say? And that is a very big difference. So I think when you start writing what you want to talk about and what you feel called to do, write it from a very giving mentality of what a, what am I offering in, in what do people, what might people out there need during this time? And what, you know, what do I have to offer? I think is really the mentality that shifted for me from a place of what do I want to say versus what might people need to hear. That's right. And I think our souls, they are, as you say in the book, you know, they're this acorn of a plan that has always been with us that needs to blossom over the course of our lives. And I think that if a book is part of that blossoming for you, it will be in service. It, you, your, each of our lives are in service. And so you can ask yourself exactly that question. What is my soul asking to give the world and how can I support? And I think that's a really wonderful way to find our way back. Yes. And I think that everyone should feel like they have that in them. Everyone's story is unique and there's someone out there that needs to hear it. I think the hardest part about writing a book is those moments when you're like, who, who cares? Does anyone care? (laughs) Telling this story about when my mom X, Y, and Z and who who cares? And then you have to get back to the place of, well, there is going to be someone. And it wasn't until people started reading it and I started getting some feedback uh, where people were really connecting to different stories and having real emotions that I started to really believe that. So I think it's a lot of just keep going, just keep going. Yeah, definitely. And I think that I'm glad you brought that up. So many people ask themselves, well, I don't have anything to give. Uh, if you're telling me I need to be giving something to the, I don't have any service, you know, and that's just not true. Your story, if you're willing to share it, is your service. Exactly, exactly. And 
And, you know, and one of the things that sobriety talks about is recognizing and how to recognize your own soul journey. And that is your story. Mm -hmm. So if you are having trouble with what part of your story, right, is the part that that people need to hear, maybe take a step back and go through some of your soul journeys in your life and some of the things that you've been called to do and how that happened and the struggles and what happened and how you came out the other side and now what you have to offer. It doesn't have to be your entire life, but maybe a portion of your life where you really gained wisdom and now you have something to give back. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, we will leave it there, but I will encourage everybody to buy your copy of Sobriety. It is truly a book that changed the way I think, even after all these years about how a book comes together. And I believe it's for everybody, you know, to anyone who's interested in finding your way back to the truest part of your soul, there is a path and a journey available to you in that book. So congratulations on the book being published, Elisa. 